But if God wants to do something and, and kill some things out of your life or crush some things, we're going to let him do that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. So it's, it's an honor for me to, to, to be here and, and speak. It is my first time. I am a little nervous. I'm, I'm not a teacher or a theologian um, by no means. I'm just here to kind of share a little bit about my life, my story, uh, what God has been doing in me, and I just want to share a little bit um, with you. And isn't it amazing, our pastor, such a, such a heart, such a caring um, and loving heart with the kids, serving with the kids. He's not Amen. preaching, but he's still serving. Love our pastor. So blessed and so honored um, to be mentored by such a man. So um, I want to just introduce myself. I'm, again, I'm Sosh. I have uh, two beautiful kids, amazing wife, third on the way. We're expecting in November three girls. We are excited. <laughs> cool. Come on. <laughs> Super excited. Um, and uh, yeah, I, our family immigrated to the States 30 years ago. It was 1989 that uh, God opened the door for our family to, to come to America. It was a long process. It was about, I don't know, three or four months at least for us to, to get here. Um, I almost became an Austrian boy. My, my 12-year-old sister did lose me for a whole day. Um, there's seven of us kids, and she's the oldest, so she had to watch us, and I was probably two and a half at the time. Took us to a park, and yes, I almost became an Austrian boy. For a day, they could not find me. I followed the train tracks, and I just kept going. I just kept going. <laughs> um, but God has been so good. I... Um, immigrated from the country of Moldova. Has anyone ever heard of this country, Moldova? Do we have any Moldovans here today in the house? No Moldovans, not a single one. I'm the only one. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Because <laughs> there's always jokes about Moldovans. <laughs> um, maybe the reason why a lot of you haven't heard of it because it's such a small country, the, about a fifth of the size of uh, Washington State. And... Uh, the, the population of the entire country is about 3.5 million, which is just the population of just this greater Seattle area here. So small country, um, that's where I came from, but God brought me here, and I want to be used and effective as, as best I can. And again, I, I, I'm going to apologize. I, you know, I don't have it all put together, how to present a nice speech. I'm just going to be sharing my heart. And yes, I, I, I still get nervous, but I used to have a an unbelievable fear in my life that I'm going to share a little bit about that God delivered me from, but he didn't take away the, the little nervousness. And he spoke to me one time and he said, you know, I'm actually not going to take that away. Those little butterflies you get when you're about to speak in front of somebody, uh, in front of people, I'm not going to take that away because guess what? If you're too comfortable, you might not, you might start sharing something from, from you and not from me. So I'm not going to allow you to get too comfortable. I'm going to let you stay a little bit nervous. So you have to be in tune with me, in tune with the Holy Spirit to be able to be able to speak. So I'm all thank you. I get those butterflies. I'm all thank you. It's a reminder. Thank you, Jesus. You set me free from fear, though. And, and it's, it, it's unbelievable what, um, what, what he's done. Um, the title of my message this morning is Remember Who You Are. Remember Who You Are. We're going to go into jump right in. I, I want to leave a little bit of time um, for God to move and a little bit of time for ministry uh, at the end. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, Luke 19, 1 through 10. It's, this is the story of Zacchaeus. Has everyone heard the story of Zacchaeus? Most of us have. In elementary or, or I mean, in Sunday school, uh, we heard about the story of Zacchaeus, the short dude, right? So I found myself in this story. Maybe you're going to find yourself in this story too. So we're going to read through real quick. We're going to uh, hit a couple points and just discuss about um, the life of Zacchaeus in these 10 uh, verses. So in the city of Jericho, there lived a very wealthy man named Zacchaeus, who was the supervisor over all the tax collectors. As Jesus made his way through the city, Zacchaeus was eager to see Jesus. He kept trying to get a look at him, but the crowd around Jesus was massive. Zacchaeus was a very short man, couldn't see over the heads of the people, so he ran ahead, climbed up on a blossoming fig tree so he could get a glimpse of Jesus as he passed by. When Jesus got to that place, he looked up into the tree and said, Zacchaeus, hurry on down, for I am appointed to stay at your house today. So he scurried down the tree and came face to face with Jesus. As Jesus left to go with Zacchaeus, many in the crowd complained, 
look at this. Of all the people to have dinner with, he's going to eat in the house of a crook. Zacchaeus joyously welcomed Jesus and was amazed over his gracious visit to his home. Zacchaeus stood in front of the Lord and said, half of all that I own, I will give to the poor. And Lord, if I have cheated anyone, I promise to pay back four times as much as I stole. Jesus said to him, this shows that today life has come to you and your household, for you are a true son of Abraham. The son of man, who is Jesus, has come to seek out and to give life to those who are lost. Thank you for sticking with me on that long scripture. Everyone's still awake. Praise God. Um, so I started um, seeing different things. I, I read this scripture and the Lord started showing me um, different things and different questions I should be asking myself when I look at the, at the, at the life of Zacchaeus. Um, and the very first thing I notice in this uh, verse, if we go back to the beginning, is that Zacchaeus was searching. Zacchaeus was searching. It says he was eager uh, to see Jesus. It says he kept trying. He kept trying to get a look at him, right? So where he was at, he's like, I'm short. I ain't going to be able to see this Jesus. Uh, I, need to, I need to find a way to see him. So guess what? He was searching uh, for a way. He was searching for him. So out of the first series, uh, well, the first question out of the series is, are you searching this morning? You know? Jesus is present. Jesus is here. Jesus is moving. Are you ready to see him? Are you searching for him? Are you, are you ready? Because he's coming. He's coming. And he's there every day, always coming, coming into your life. Are you searching for him? Otherwise, he's going to pass you by. You're not going to know what happened. Um, and how hard are you searching for him? How eager are you to find him? I like the verse in Jeremiah 29, uh, verse 13. It says, when you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart. That's, that's not a question. That's, that's a statement. When you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart. And sometimes it just, that's what it takes. God, I'm hungry. I'm desperate. I need an encounter with you. I'm searching for you. God, I, I'm here for you. That's, that's what it takes um, so many times. So, um, you know, stop wondering where God is in your life. Stop questioning, does is, is God even care about me? And actually, let's, why don't we start seeking and searching? Because he is there. And he can absolutely uh, be found. So, verse 4 says he ran and he climbed, right? He ran and he climbed. So this shows me that he, not only is he searching, now he's taking action. He sees the crowd and he's running. Okay, I need to get away from this crowd. I see a tree. I need to, I need to run and I need to climb. I need to get up um, to see this man. So he took uh, action. He didn't just sit there and say, well, you know, oh, well, oh, well. You know, maybe next time. Maybe I'll get to catch him next time. No, he was like, okay, I'm going to see this Jesus. I'm going to see him. So are you taking action um, in, uh, in your life to see the move of God, to see God do something? Are, are, what are you doing? Are you just sitting back? I'm comfortable on my couch. I'm watching my movie. I'm, I'm on my social media. Jesus, you see me sitting here. I'm doing my thing. You can come anytime. No. When are you going to? You know, put away those distractions. Put away that phone. Maybe turn off that TV for a moment. Say, say, God, now I'm not only searching, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking a step. I'm turning off the distractions. I'm turning off the things that, have, that are, you know, that are um, in my way. Uh, and now I'm turning my focus and attention to you. And, and, and gosh, that's when he comes, guys, in, in such, a, such a powerful way. Such a powerful way. You know, he didn't, he didn't need to make excuses that he's too short or too slow. Um, the crowd is too big. Everyone's pushing me. Um, I'm too, or maybe he was even thought, well, I'm too sinful. You know, I don't have my act together. You know, there was no excuses. So, you know, what excuse do you have this morning from uh, really seeking, seeking in him and, and, and searching him? See, 
It's, it's, a, it's a position that changed. When he was down on the ground, see, he couldn't see. So he had to take action to change his position. Now he had to climb the tree. And from there, now he's like, okay, now I can, I, can, I can see bigger. I don't just see what's in front of me. I don't just see what my next step is. Now I can see ahead. You know? And that's what, that's what um, he wants for you. Look ahead. Don't just look at what's in front of you now, what you're dealing with now, the issues you're going with now, the struggles, um, the addictions, whatever you may have. Don't look at what's ahead of you. Say, okay, step back, step up, get into a different position, and now, now you start to see, okay, there's a bigger picture. Okay? There's a bigger picture. So let's not, let's not make up um, excuses. It says he climbed a blossoming fig tree. And I, 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 sh- I shared this example, so I'm just going to share with you now just so you have a, a little uh, visual. In uh, first service, Robert ate my other half. I have a fig tree growing in my backyard. And it's unbelievable. I'm all, this is cool. Because just yesterday was the first day that they were actually ripe and juicy. We've had sun coming in, and they're so soft and so good. I'm like, ooh, this is good. I tried it actually a few days ago. It wasn't soft. It wasn't sweet. Just yesterday, perfect. And so they're like a pear-shaped thing. I cut this one in half, and it comes down almost like a pear shape. And this is like this strawberry-looking um, uh, texture that's unbelievable. The taste is amazing. Robert, how was the other half? Amazing. So it was cool that he would climb this, um, he would climb this uh, fig tree. And now my fig tree is about yay tall. So... I'm sure he couldn't have climbed that little fig tree to see much. He would have probably broken every branch getting up there. Um, so this was a sycamore uh, fig tree, a big tree. I've, I saw some pictures online. And, uh, you know, he got up there. It's, it, it's cool because the, the way the branches grow, they're kind of low and they grow out. You know, so it's easy to kind of get on and climb on. Maybe he was having lunch there while he was waiting for Jesus because these figs are unbelievable. Who's had a fresh fig like that off a tree? They're awesome. I never, knew they, I never knew I would like them. They're actually unbelievable. So if you haven't had a, a fresh fig, you got to try it. This, I, there's different ones. There's ones that are purple. This one is green, and that's, that's the way it doesn't go purple. It's, that's the, that's just how it's ripe it is. So um, anyway, let's, let's get back into scripture here. Um, verse 5, Jesus looked up, right? Jesus looked up. Thank you. Verse 5, he looked up into the tree and said, Zacchaeus, hurry on down, for I am appointed to stay at your house today. Other versions say, I must stay at your house today. I must stay at your house today. See, Jesus didn't pass him by. Zacchaeus was searching. Zacchaeus took action. Zacchaeus didn't make excuses. And guess what? Jesus did not pass him by. There was a big crowd. There was a lot of people, but he did not pass him by. Why? Because he, 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 he wanted to see him. He, he made room. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get over this hurdle, whatever it may be in your life. I'm going to get over this, and I just wanted to encounter Jesus. And guess what? He will not pass you by. He, you, he, will, find, uh, he will find you. The question is, do you want to be found? Do you want to be found? Sometimes we're hiding, and God's not in the business of chasing. He can find you where you're at, and you know, if he needs to, but he's not in the business of chasing you and hunting you down. It's, it's when he sees, okay, now my son or my daughter, now, now they get a little bit of it, and now they're coming. He says, man, I will run. You take one step to me, and I will come running towards you. I will come running towards you. So get found, guys. No more hiding. No, no more. Come out. Come out of the hiding. See, when, when you want to be seen, when you want to be seen, you'll do whatever it takes uh, to be found. If you're stuck somewhere out in the mountains, you ain't, you're going to be like, I'm over here. You're going to be waving your hands. You're, you want to be found. Oh, I see that little speck over there waving. Boom. Help comes, right? If you don't want to be found, if you're going to be hiding under some bush, well, Good luck. Good luck. So um, that's what I uh, l- love about um, Zacchaeus, that he was searching for Jesus. And Jesus, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I see you. I, I'm not going to pass you by. A lot of you think, well, 
Jesus doesn't care about my issues or my problems. They're too small for him. Um, he doesn't care about that. Guess what? He does not overlook you, and he does not pass you by. There's nothing that's insignificant to him, whatever it may be, the, even the littlest uh, thing. There's nothing that's insignificant to him. So he came to Jesus, verse 6 and 7, face to face. Face to face. Verse 6 and 7. That's a position I want to be in. Jesus, I want to come to you face to face. I don't, I'm done hiding. I'm done running. I'm done trying to figure it out on my own. Here I am, just as I am. Zacchaeus was probably thinking, okay, I'm a crook. That's what they call me. Uh, you know, I'm a thief. I'm dishonest. I'm the nowadays IRS agent that will not leave you alone. And uh, he's like, okay, what's, what's this man trying to do? Um, coming into my home, you know, maybe he was at a loss for words. Really? I, I don't have it all together. I, I'm a sinful man. Why would you want to, why would you want to come into my home? But that's what he wants to do. He wants to come into your home. And he knocks at your door all the time. A lot of times when, when we let distractions get in the way, there's, we don't, we don't hear that knock. We don't hear that, that, that voice. Sometimes it's that still small voice, and we can't hear it because we got so much going on. I, I got this, and I got this to do. I got goals to achieve. I got, you know, school to get through. I got a family to start. I got a business to run. I got to go, 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 go. I got to hustle. I got to grind. Go, go, go. He's like, no, just slow down a little bit and hear from me because you can grind all you want, hustle all you want. That'll only get you so far. That'll only get you so far. But if you let me come in, you listen to my still small voice, the game changes. The game changes. So what I love about Zacchaeus is he didn't allow his past to dictate his future. What people thought about him, what people said about him. He's like, uh-uh, that's not going to dictate my future. I'm, I'm meeting Jesus. I'm meeting the one man that's going to change my life forever. That's going to change my life forever. So don't, dic don't let what happened in your past dictate what God has for you. Because God has an unbelievable plan for you. He loves you so much. He's uh, uh, into every detail of your life. And he cares about you. Every little thing. You're like, well, why would he care about that? Yeah, oh, he does. He cares about every detail. He created you in his image. He loves you so much. Don't let whatever happened, you know, the hurts that you had, the pains, the fears, whatever it may be, what people uh, said about you, the lies, uh, don't let that dictate your future because his plans are great for you. His plans are great for you. The work that he has started in you, he will absolutely bring that to completion. He will bring that work to completion. Whatever those, you know, fears or failures may be, they're, they're actually, they can be crippling and they can, they can stop you, you know, dead in your tracks. Um, and that's what, that's what the enemy did to me. Man, he stopped, he stopped me. And uh, I was crippled with fear as a, as a, as a young boy, as like a, a junior higher. You know, I was in the, the seventh grade, um, grew up in an amazing, loving Christian family. But even good, good kids in a good Christian family, they make mistakes. They go through things. Maybe something that it wasn't even their fault. The enemy is doing everything to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But guess what? He comes to redeem everything. He redeems, he restores, he forgives, and he forgets, and he justifies uh, you. Justifies you. You know what that means? It means just as if you had never sinned. That's how he sees you. That's what he does. That's what he does. And I'm going to share quickly about, you know, I, I didn't make all the right decisions. And one time I cheated on a, um, on a, on a paper. My older brother, Vic, was uh, one year ahead of me. So I thought, okay, this guy, was, this guy was a genius, always getting A's. He was the brains of the family. And I'm, I'm going to take his paper because I'm in the same class. 
and I already know he got an A on it. I'm going to submit that. We had to do this huge extensive research in junior high on the country. We had, we had to know, you know, what they do, um, their economy, uh, what they eat, maybe what sports they play, just everything about them, the population. We had to just in depth go into uh, this country, do this entire presentation, um, and, turn, and turn it in on, on paper. So I'm like, boom, turn that in. I'm like, uh-huh, A plus, A plus for me. Little did I know that when we turned in those reports, uh, the teacher's like, okay, so now we're going to go around and we're going to um, have, you know, you guys share something about your, something about your country. I'm like, dear God, I didn't even read the rep- I didn't read it. I have no idea about the country I just turned in. And like, oh, you know, even, even with that, and like fear just starts already creeping in from this, from this, you know, little thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, if he picks on me, I'm not going to know what to do. Oh my gosh, don't pick on me. So, Saj, tell us a little bit about your country. What do they do, you know, so and so? Um, well, they do this and, the, and this other kid, um, his name was Brian, he's like, dude, they don't do that. <laughs> I'm all, they don't? Uh, well, 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 yeah, that, that's it. And he's like, no, 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 let Sasha finish. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and guys, I'm telling you, even from things like that, cheating, um, lying, uh, deceiving, you know, the enemy starts to attack in those, in those little areas, and then he starts to plant uh, plant fear, and then we went on a, a retreat and choir tours with uh, with our uh, with our school. And one of the one of the our own teachers even started uh, touching me inappropriately. I'm like, what's happening? Is this for real? What's going on? And I and, and I was just this little 12 year old kid. I'm all, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. Do I tell anyone? And then I was just so quiet. And fear just came in and, and just gripped me. I'm like, I don't know what happened. Did I do something wrong? Did, it, is it my fault? And I just, and the enemy is just, you know, attacking, attacking one thing after another, after another, after another, stealing and just stealing from me, stealing uh, even my voice. Um, it, was, it was such a difficult season for me, guys. Some of you may be struggling with fear. I don't know if it was at this, at, at this level, but some of you may be struggling with fear. Guys, I'm telling you, those of you who, who are, it, it's... It's crippling, and it, it really, it just shuts you up, right? Because the devil does not want you um, sharing. He does not want you to uh, expand and grow the, to grow the kingdom. So he's going to do whatever he can to tell you, you're not good enough. Yeah. You're not smart enough. You're not educated enough. What are you talking about? You don't have a degree in that. Uh, you got fear in your life. How are you going to talk to these people about that? You're still struggling with that issue. What are you going to be doing telling somebody about that when you're still struggling with it? And he's going to tell you every, every lie, every doubt, every deceit. He's going to plant those and plant those and plant those. And, and pretty soon, you're going to start to believe that. When you don't believe what's, what God thinks about you, you start to begin to believe what the lies and what the enemy um, tells you. And for me, it was, it was tough, guys. I couldn't talk in front of my own family. Any kind of attention I'd get, I would just freeze up and I'd just be numb and I couldn't get a word out of my mouth. I'm talking about, um, I mean, I could go hang out and play with friends in the park, but the moment attention's on me, I just froze. I just freeze. You know, and that's what the enemy does because defeat is the sound of silence. And he knew if he could keep me silent, that's it. He would defeat me and I, I would be defeated and I can't, I can't do what God has called me to do. And that's what he wants to do over, you know, a lot of people. He wants to silence you to defeat the call that God has on your life. And God has a call in your life. God has a plan and purpose. And guys, I'm telling you, the enemy's attacking. The enemy's attacking. The enemy's attacking. Stay strong. Stay rooted. And um, it's that uh, fellowship with the Holy Spirit that'll get you through it, guys. Um, I remember having to give a speech in front of my class, and I'm like, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. I got up in front of the class, and I, I was just, couldn't get a word out of my mouth. I saw my teacher start to sink down into her chair like this, and she felt so bad for me, and it was horrible. I couldn't, I couldn't even do family prayer when we'd pray in the evenings with our family, and I'm all, and I'll be sweating. I just hope my dad doesn't pick me to finish the prayer. I just, please, God, don't, don't let my dad... 
pick on me to finish the prayer. And if he picked on me, I just like, Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this night. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It, 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 was, it was crazy. Guys, it, it was crazy. I remember even whispering to my, uh, to my teacher, I'm all, um, we're reading and, you know, you go around and do paragraphs, you know, in history class or whatnot, and everyone reads a paragraph. And I was whispering um, to my history teacher because I was on the uh, front row. He's, and, 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 he, and he's just in there following along in the book. He doesn't hear me. I don't want my classmates to hear me because I am so ashamed that I got this fear in my life. I'm, like, I'm looking around. Mr. So-and-so, please don't pick me. Please. And I'm just, just he doesn't hear me. Please don't pick me. And, 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 and then I see someone looking at me. Okay. No, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I'm good. Are you hearing things? I'm and it was that bad. And one, and one of my teachers, he's all, you know, what's going on? You know, he, he was a teacher that cared about me. He said, what's going on? Um, I'm all, I just can't do it. I just got this fear in my life. I just can't do it. I can't. He said, okay, I'm going to try to help you out. I'm going to give you the smallest paragraph. Every time we ever have a reading assignment, it's going to be like one to two sentences. And you can get through it. You can get through it. And, you know, loving, loving teachers like that, um, you know, that helped me through it. But... Guys, I'm telling you, there was this just one point, one uh, point in my life where I just got so sick and tired of it. It was, it was uh, just eating me alive. This fear, eating me alive. I can't live like this anymore. And I was at a, I was at a youth service, and man, I just, I just got angry with the devil. I'm all, uh, uh-uh, uh, no more. I was probably like 14 or 14 years old. It was a couple of years that I struggled with this. And I, and I just stomped my foot. No more, devil. I take authority over you. God did not give me a spirit of fear. And I just started declaring. And I'm declaring. I'm all, no more fear. Be gone. Get away. Get out of my life. I took authority. And I'm telling you, you guys have that same authority. Jesus lives in you. You have that authority. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're going through, you have the authority to say, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I will not go through this anymore. I will not be tormented like this anymore. I will not deal with that nonsense anymore. You have that authority. Yes, you can come pray with somebody, but guess what? There's power even in your own words. And, yeah. and the thing is, sometimes you don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in who you are, and that's why you need to go to somebody, right? But guess what? If you believe in who you are, it'll happen. Yeah. Just like it happened to me. I'm like, okay, God. This is what it says in your word. You have not given me a spirit of fear. And I just started quoting scripture. And guess what? Man, that evil spirit left me. That spirit of fear, gone. Yeah. To this day, I've never struggled with fear in my life. Do I get a little bit, a little bit of anxiety or nervous? Yes, but that's for a reason. And God said, I'm going to leave that in your life for a reason. So you're not comf don't get too comfortable with sharing what you want. So I'm telling you guys, take authority. I'd love to pray with you. If anyone wants prayer, I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to believe with you. But you need to start realizing who you are. Yeah. The strength you have. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Let's go into verse 8 real quick. He says, you welcome Jesus. And was amazed over his gracious visit. He was amazed over his gracious visit. His life was completely transformed uh, when he... What's up, Karis? How you doing, bud? <laughs> it's okay. He can hang out with me. Um, see, his life was transformed. And he was amazed that Jesus would come into his home. This thief, this crook, dishonest man. Jesus would come in. And he would, and he, his life was changed because he encountered Jesus. So I'm going to ask you this morning, is your life different because you've encountered Jesus? If you have not encountered him, you're going to have a chance even, even today. But if you've encountered him, is your life different? Does it look the same as before? If, it's, if it looks the same, that's not an encounter. Yeah. Maybe that's, maybe, oh, I, I, heard of Jesus. I heard of Jesus. I heard about him. I've read about him. 
Guys, there's a completely different thing between reading about him, knowing about him, right? Uh, versus actually knowing him. Not knowing about him, but knowing him on a personal level. That's a complete difference. You can know all the stories. You can read all the parables. You can, you can be a theologian, but if you haven't encountered him, you, you, haven't, you don't know, you don't know uh, the depth of, of, of who he is and the power that you, have, that you have in him. So my life, when I encountered Jesus, my life changed, especially even 2019. My life has been so different. Um, the Holy Spirit has been working in me. He's been speaking to me. He's been showing me things, stuff I've never, never knew before. I knew the religious prayer. I knew the religious reading of the Bible. And there was never a, a relationship where God would, God would come speak to me and show me things, not just for my life, for my family. Now, hey, guess what? There's somebody else over there. Really? Oh, there is. Hi. You know, there's people surrounding us that, that need us. There's people all around us that need hope because they're hopeless. You know, they're broken. They need somebody that can come alongside them and love on them and, 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 and be with them and, and speak into them. And, man, who's been enjoying these, this series of the Holy Spirit uh, that Pastor John's been doing? It's been transformational for me. The Holy Spirit's been doing so much in my life. Guys, I'm a, I'm a different person than I was before. I'm a different person. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. When you encounter Jesus, he changes everything. And it says, when uh, Zacchaeus was completely uh, transformed, when he allowed Jesus into his life, because repentance uh, came. It says a new life. New life has come to you and your household. That means salvation came in that moment of encountering Jesus. Salvation came. His life was never the same. Guess what he did? He began to make things right. He said, who I wronged, I'll give half of my, uh, half of everything I own and pay them four times back, whoever I stole from or cheated. I'm going to pay them four times. See, now that's repentance, you know. He's making things right. And when the Holy Spirit started speaking to me, he's like, hey, there's, there's even things that you've done in the past that uh, you need to make right and you need to ask forgiveness for because guess what? Healing may uh, take time. For healing to happen but time does not make forgiveness happen if you don't go back and even if some somebody you hurt 10 years ago or somebody did something um, to you time isn't going to heal that it's it, it's an action of hey i'm gonna i'm gonna forgive or i'm gonna go and ask for forgiveness and the holy spirit even I, I grew up in Eastern Washington. Even as I was uh, driving back there one time, there was a gas station. The Holy Spirit showed me, boom, right there on your left. Um, I'm all, yeah, I remember that gas station. I was there 15 years ago, bought a Subway sandwich there. And he said, yeah. Um, so who's ever had a sandwich from a gas station? Yeah. Not very many people. Yeah. You, when, you're, when you're a contractor, uh, sometimes you, you, you go on the run, you go quick. You might, you might get, you know, junk food or whatnot. That, that explains the belly. My wife is saying, as long as you don't grow at a faster pace than me because I'm pregnant. So I think she's, I think she's finally outgrown me. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but I went, to the, I, I went to this gas station and I um, got this uh, sub sandwich and they printed out the little receipt. And, you know, you're supposed to take it up to the front of, and, and pay for it. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. She just gave me a receipt, didn't ask for payment. Cool, free sandwich. I walked out, you know, uh, walked out, ate that sub. Fifteen years later, the Holy Spirit saw, hey, you, you stole a sandwich. You stole a sandwich. And I was there. He said, you go back in there, and you, and you tell them uh, what you did, and you pay for that sandwich. I'm like, oh, dear God, are you kidding me? And guess what? I did. I, well, I went back into that gas station. I'm like, you're probably not the same owners as 15 years ago, you know, when I, was a, when I was like 18. But guess what? I took a sandwich without paying for it. And I'm going to pay for it. No, you don't need to do that. No, I need to do that. Because the Holy Spirit started bringing uh, to my mind things um, to my memory. And he said, okay, if you want me to use you and you, if you want me to work in you, you, you can't have anything attached that could be 
pulling back on your calling. You know, anything that's any unforgiveness, any hurt, any pain, anything, if that's not all cut loose, then you have some limitations. So he said, you need to go do that. I'm like, okay. And I did. And I, and I went and paid for that sandwich. I'll, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. As a kid, I came here and I walked out. So you charged me. What's your most expensive sub? I paid for that. And the Holy Spirit began, uh, continued to work in me and, and said, hey, about five years ago, you were at your house with, with some friends and you were talking, you were talking uh, bad about somebody else that wasn't in your midst. And he says, you need, a, you need to repent and apologize. You know, so I'm like, oh, wow, okay. And it's just these funny things that I would have never known, that I would, that I would have, I already forgot them. But when my spirit became alert and alive, the spirit started speaking to me things, and I need to make things right. So I went to the uh, couple friends that I was, that I was with, and I, I went to one, and I said, hey, um, back then, you know, I was, I was going through, you know, a difficult time, and um, I, was talking, I was talking nonsense kind of about so-and-so, you know, I just wanted to let you know that the Holy Spirit convicted me and I want to ask forgiveness. He said, I don't remember. He said, well, and I told him, well, I do. And, you know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Went up, went up to my next friend and told, you know, told him the same thing. Hey, uh, remember, remember that occasion in my living room on the couch? He said, yeah, I, I remember that. He said, and I said, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have done that. Um, and then I went to, the, went to that very person and apologized to him. I'm all, this happened five years ago. You know, who am I to be judging and talking behind your back? And, uh, you know, saying things, that's not my position. And I'm all, I'm sorry. And he said, what are you talking about, brother? Don't worry about that. Are you kidding me? We're friends. We're buds. I'm all, you know, thank you. But that's, that's what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do. And there was, I'm not going to share all these stories, but there was these things that he'd bring to my remembrance. You know, even, even apologizing to my wife for times I've treated her. Or maybe even apologizing to my kids. Hey, I'm not the perfect dad. You know, I, I, I want to be there. I want to be there in every moment. And sometimes I let distractions get into the way and, and work and business get into the way. I'm sorry, you know. And there's moments he's bringing back just like Zacchaeus. He made things right. I started to make things right. I'm a Holy Spirit. I don't want anything holding me back from, from what you want, yeah. from how you want to uh, use me and how I want to be effective. I don't want anything holding me back. And I know the Holy Spirit wants to speak to some of you this morning. He already has been speaking to some of you. And he's, he's knocking at your door even, even this morning. And will you respond? Will you, will you hear him? If we can have the, maybe the keys come up and maybe dim, dim some lights. Some of you just need to remember who you are this morning. I just watched Lion King with my, with my kids yesterday. And there was that famous saying from Mufasa, the king lion, to, uh, to his son, right? Remember who you are. See, he was lost. He was broken. This little, this little lion pup lion, or lion cub, you know, he thought, he thought he was responsible for his father's death, and he wasn't. And um, he, came, he came back and saw the reflection. His, now he's this grown lion. He was supposed to be the next king. And he's this grown lion, and he sees his reflection in the water. And, um, and just, like, just like we are of, of a reflection, because we were created in the likeness and in the image of God, now he starts to see this reflection of his father. And then he hears this voice coming from the heaven, you know, or from the clouds. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. And it, this is just a, you know, a movie, a cartoon, but there's, you know, so much truth in that. A lot of times we forget who we are. And God destined some of you, many of you, for great, great things. But you forgot who you were. You forgot who he created you to be. And guess what? You are a son and you are a daughter. And he loves you so much. See, I had to remember who I was. I was lost. I had fear, insecurities. I'm not smart enough. Like my brother, I don't have a degree. I don't, I'm not a theologian. I'm just this random dude 
that's trying to make his life work. And he says, no. That's not who you are. You're my son. You're my son. You have an inheritance. Holy Spirit started just breaking stuff, breaking stuff, breaking walls and breaking things out of my life and, and just um, cleaning me out, just cleaning me out. And I, I believe he wants to do that to some of you this morning. You're going to have a chance to, to respond, and God wants to do something unbelievable in your life, guys. I'm telling you, a life with him is so much better than a life without him because you can... You can try to do stuff with your own strength guys it's exhausting i've tried it i've tried to be a good dad on my with my own strength i tried to be a good businessman with my own strength i tried to be a good leader with my own strength but guess what guys you burn out you get exhausted you fail you mess up it'll only get you so far you need him you need the spirit that's gonna that's gonna teach you he's the greatest teacher that, that'll comfort you in those times. That'll stand with you in those times. That, that'll um, encourage you, bring back memories uh, of, of what God has spoken uh, over you. Bring to light scriptures. So I'm like thinking, Jesus, I don't want any other life without you. I just want you. And that's all I want. I don't care if I'm going to be a successful businessman. I don't, I don't care about anything. Jesus, I just want you. Holy Spirit, I just want you. I want to experience you, and I want to be able to make a difference in somebody else's life. Working hard or making an extra 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, or 5,000 bucks a month, whatever it may be, you're not going to remember that. Oh, well, I, I bought another toy, or I was able to, you know, give my kids this, you know, because I worked harder, I grinded harder. And the Holy Spirit says, you know, your kids aren't going to remember those, you know, even those toys and even those extra long hours you work. They're going to remember when you spent time with them. Yeah. You just loved on them. And, and you were just, just wrestling with them and having a good time. And I'm all, thank you, Holy Spirit. So he's been speaking and speaking to me, teaching me things about, about me, my kids, my family, um, work. And I'm a Holy Spirit. I just want you nothing for myself I don't want a name I don't want a platform or any kind of a stage God I just want you and he started doing so much in my life guys I, I've got the opportunity to open my eyes and my world's gotten bigger I've gotten a chance to pray for people I've, I've taken many Ubers uh, sometimes and it's like okay God Whoever's going to pick me up is going to be a person that you, you want to speak into. So I've taken every opportunity. Okay, this might be weird. This might be strange. But, you know, I start to ask about them, about their life, you know. Um, and, then I, and then I ask, you know, after I get a little connection, hey, can I pray with you? And there's been multiple times I've, I've, I've prayed for drivers and they're all, wow. You don't know what that means to me. I said, Holy Spirit, I want to be so sensitive. I just want to hear you in every moment. Because somebody may have been thinking, okay, no one's going to come up to me. If no one's going to love on me, I'm just going to call it quits. He's looking for people that are going to hear his voice. So I was praying for this driver, Eastern Indian gentleman, prophesying over him, declaring over him, and I'm and I'm going to a service. I'm going to a service. I was in, I was in Kirkland. And I was going to a service in in, in in Seattle. My my wife was going home to um, to get the kids ready for bed. And I'm, I I want to be at this service tonight. So I took an Uber and I'm I'm praying for this guy and he's got his hand, he's got his hands folded and he's praying. And I, I didn't see I, I didn't see that. I'm just I'm just believing and praying for him, declaring. He said, "Thank you so much. You just don't know what that meant." I got out of the car, and the the greeter at the door opens um, opens the door for me. He said, "Were you just praying for that Uber driver?" I'm all I was. I'm all. How do you know? Well, 
I, I just saw his hands like this. I'm like, yeah, I was praying for him. And how can I pray for you too? God wants to do something in you. You know, you might think you're an usher at the back. You're serving coffee on the side. You're whatever you may be doing. And you think, well, my role is not significant. I'm not important. No. You are a part of the body. You are a part of the body. And I said, how can I pray for you? And he says, well, I actually have some pain in my wrists right here. I'm, on both sides, I'm all, okay. I'll pray for your healing. What else can I pray for you for? He tells me some other things. And I prayed and I declared and I believed over him. And I said, God, God is healing you. I go into this service. And now I'm already, I'm already towards the end of the service. Um, as, the manage, as the message is almost wrapping up. And then the minister says, hey, there's somebody here who's got pain in both of their wrists. That God is healing you right now. And I'm all, thank you, Jesus. I know you're doing that. Um, and I began to pray for, I began to pray for another person um, there. And God, God started showing me things. I put my hand on his shoulder and I started, uh, God, what are you showing me for this person? I laid my hands on, on his shoulder and he just starts showing me, hey, I have you uh, in this season right now. You're studying. And, and I'm surrounding you around uh, the people that are in your classes and even the professors. It's, it's, uh, it's for, a, for a reason. It is intentional. And I've put, put you there and I've placed you there. And I'm prophesying over him. I, don't, I have no idea if this guy goes to school. And I'm, all, and I'm just prophesying uh, over him. And I see you're worried about um, debt. And in my mind, God shows me debt. And I'm thinking he's got some credit card debt. And I have no idea. And I'm praying for this guy. And I'm, and I'm believing um, speaking into him, believing that God's going to do an amazing work in his life. And as I was about to walk away, and then I turned back around, I'm like, hey, actually, what do you do? He said, you know what? Everything you just prayed for is exactly what I'm going through. Every single detail. You know, I'm actually a student at UW, and yes, I, I have these classes, and yes, there's these people um, that I'm going to school with, and, and yes, I'm actually in a lot of debt. And, I, and, I, and I, even, I even spoke, hey, and your debt's already been paid for. That's the word the Holy Spirit gave me. That your debt has been paid for. Don't worry about that. God has you here for a purpose. And I'm a Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm praying for another guy and, and believing with him. And the Lord even shows me. I'm not going to go into depth. But the, as I prayed for him, and at the end, the Lord shows me, hey, I'm actually giving you a new car, too. And he says, wow, everything you just prayed for was exactly what I'm going through. But and it, I'm surprised you'd say that about my car. Because on, um, on, on my way here, I actually... Um, crashed my car I'm all he's given you a new a reliable car um, and I say and I'm a Holy Spirit it's not about me what, what I can what I can say what I can do it's about you touching people and I want to be available for you to work through me I want to be a vessel that in a channel that you can work through and I can go and, and pray for somebody and believe in something happens guys because now I know who I am. And God's asking you today, will you remember who you are? Will you remember who I created you to be? Hey, I've got a bright future for you. My plans are so bright for you. My plans are so big. Just remember who you are. You are my son. You are my daughter. You are my dearly loved children. You have access to everything. You have access to the fullness of Jesus. Not just to a little bit. You have access to the fullness. Anything you want. You're my son. It's yours. You're my daughter. It's yours. That's for you. That's for you. And I started asking the Holy Spirit as I was at a kid's camp. And I was, I was praying and saying, Lord, what do you want to do even, even during this service? And I opened up my eyes and I, and I immediately see a girl with a with a brace on her knee and the Lord says I'm going to heal her tonight um, after my uh, friend got done speaking he said hey can you come up and help pray for these kids I'm all absolutely so I'm praying for these kids I even forgot about the girl that had the uh, that had the brace on her knee and I'm praying for these kids and these are little 11 12 13 14 year olds and I'm, I'm believing into them and Gosh, they're, they're going through stuff too. They're little, but man, the enemy's attacking, planting stuff that they're not good enough. They got all these insecurities and doubts about themselves. I'm, I'm not going to amount to anything, you know. And, and it's sad to see this. 
and I'm speaking over these kids and praying over them and there's tears rolling down their face and then one of the volunteers comes up after, after the, I got done praying with these kids and there was different leaders praying. The volunteers come, uh, came up and she said, can you pray for me too? I'm like, absolutely. And right in that moment, God says, I'm giving uh, her the gift of faith to go lay hands and, uh, and pray for that girl. I'm all, I'm all, okay. So I tell her, hey, this is what I see for you. The Holy Spirit wants you. He's given you the gift of faith. He wants you to go pray for this girl. Do you know this girl? She's wearing the purple shirt. Um, it says Vikings on the back. That, that was her team name. Do you know this girl? She's all, yeah, she's actually in my cabin. She's in my group. Well, God is giving you the gift of faith for you to go lay your hands on her, and, and you're going to see a miracle happen. The service was over. I walked, I walked back. I see her in the back. I'm all, hey, did you, did you find her? Did you pray for her? She said, yes, I did. She's jumping. She's jumping and running around. She came with a note that she cannot uh, do any uh, physical activity. She cannot run. So during that uh, day at camp, she was just uh, watching what the other kids were doing. She couldn't participate in those, in those events. And guess what? Man, God touched her. Immediately, she was jumping. Immediately, she was uh, back on her, on her feet. And I'm saying, Holy Spirit, I want to be so sensitive to what you are doing, to what you are saying. I want to, it's not about the miracle. It's never about the miracle. Sometimes we get caught up on, I just, I want to see the miracle happen. Ooh, no. It's always about the bigger picture. Salvation of the soul of, of, of somebody. See, the miracle is just the appetizer of, what's, of, of what God wants to do. God's got so much more. That's just a little piece. God's got so much more. I want to be able to pray for some of you today. I know, I know God is doing something in your life, and he's, he's been stirring in my heart, and I know he's maybe stirring in some of your hearts, and there's going to be some leaders. Um, if we can have the band maybe come back um, for, just, for just a little bit, I want to be sensitive to the Spirit right now. I want to give you an opportunity just as Zacchaeus had that opportunity to meet Jesus and it transformed him forever. I want to give you that opportunity in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for your grace and your goodness in this place right now, God. And I thank you that you are moving. I thank you that there is nothing too big for you. There is nothing too big for you and you and you want to come and show yourself. And you want to come and display your grace this morning. I'm standing together with you. With all of you here today. If there's something that you, you need prayer for, I want you to be able to come up. We want to pray for you. Maybe you want to make that decision. Hey, I want to open up that door. And I want to let Jesus in. You've never, you've never done that before. I want to give you that opportunity. So if the, if the, if the band can start uh, to, to, to play. If you need prayer, if you need a miracle, if you need a breakthrough, whatever you may need, God is here and he, can, he wants to touch you and he wants to do something in your life. So I invite you, just come down. Come down and meet Jesus. Come down and just meet Jesus. Change your position. Change your position today to see him move. And when he encounters you, your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, can you guys just rise to your feet? Can you guys all stand up? Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. God, I thank you so much, Lord, for what you are doing, God. That you are speaking to hearts, God. God, you are bringing to, to remembrance even things, Lord. Mm. Yes, Father, do what only you can, even this morning, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. If you need everything, if you need anything, if you're believing for anything, just come, come this morning. God wants to meet you. God wants to meet you right where you're at. Right where you're at. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace this morning. Thank you for breaking strongholds this morning. Thank you for breaking bondages this morning. Thank you for setting people 